This video is sponsored by Zero Lens. We certainly live in interesting times. We can now buy incredibly powerful hardware that would have been impossible to do just a few years ago. We can use really powerful software that can do pretty much anything we can imagine. And apparently now we can also do physically accurate 3D renders right from our web browser. It sounds crazy, but it's true. We can now manipulate and render complex scenes right within a browser window. So you don't even need a powerful computer anymore to do this type of thing. And I'm not just talking about hitting a render button in a browser. We have full control over a scene. We can move the objects around, adjust colors, modify the lighting and depth of field. Pretty much anything we might need can be adjusted. Let's see things in more detail. The product behind this magic is called Colorful, and it's a web-based application that allows us to create our own little virtual photo studios. Because everything is in 3D, there are no limitations. We can set up pack shots exactly how we want, we can place objects in the position and rotation we want, we can basically be the art director and the photographer all at the same time. If you're a graphic designer, this is incredibly freeing. You're no longer limited by the restrictions of Photoshop mockups. With Photoshop mockups, we can move objects around or pick a list of preset rotations, but we're very limited on the composition side of things. We're stuck on one type of lighting and one specific angle. So think of Colorful as the turbocharged version of Photoshop mockups, where everything can be adjusted. When Zero Lens, the company behind Colorful, approached me to review the product, I was a bit skeptical because in order for this to work, there are several things that need to line up. First off, there needs to be an environment where the user can quickly interact with the scene and not having to wait ages for something to happen. We also need a wide variety of objects, but most importantly, what we need is a full-blown, physically accurate renderer that can deliver realistic results. And so far, they've delivered on all fronts. You might hit some interface glitches here and there, the product is still in beta after all, but it's impressive to see what the team has achieved so far. In most cases, it feels like Colorful runs locally. But enough about that, let me show you the interface and how everything else works. Let's create a new scene so we can start from scratch. On the left side we have two tabs, a library of objects, which is quite extensive, and on the second tab the structure of our scene. Currently we just have the environment object and the camera, but as we add more, these objects will show up here. On the right side we have the properties panel where we can adjust different properties of our objects. So for the environment object we can change the HDRI map, the intensity, and the rotation. On the top side we have a few more options, the button for adding more lights, a toggle for the transformation gizmo, the ability to set the focus point for the camera, and finally the aspect ratio of our final image. There's a lot of presets here like different Instagram resolutions or Facebook covers, but we can also set up our own resolution. We can go as high as 3840 by 3840 pixels. And that is it really, that's all you need to know, it's super easy to get into. Let's bring in a couple of objects and let's see how we can set things up. The collection of ready-made assets is quite good. There's already 1,500 objects available and I'm sure the library will keep increasing in the coming months. The quality of the assets is quite high. There are several objects that not only have great looking materials, but also a ton of detail. But in case we can't find the object we want, we can always bring in our own. The search field here speeds things up immensely, it's much faster to narrow down the results and find the object we need instead of having to constantly scroll down. We can search for example for table and all related objects will show up. And as you can see we have quite a bit of choice. Once we find the one we want we can just drag it into the viewport. But I don't really want to use the table, I have something else in mind. So let's delete that and let's find the pegboard I saw earlier. Perfect. The idea is to build a product shot and the main focus will be a speaker. There's a really fancy Marshall speaker I saw, so let's bring that up. And here's another cool thing. When we drag the speaker onto the board, it automatically snaps to the surface, so we don't have to fiddle around so much with positioning. The bulk of it is done for us. 
Currently, we're at the building stage, so I'm not really concerned with how things look in the rendering department. We can always see a small preview of our render here, because the system will always render a preview for us, but for now we can ignore this area. We need a couple more objects to make the scene a little bit more lively. I think some books will look uh, great next to the speaker, so let's see what we can find. As you can see, we have a ton of choices, but uh, I think I'll go with this one. Yep, that looks good. Now for the top shelf, we could use a nice picture frame. Awesome. I think we need a little something next to the speaker on the right side. There's this nice uh, pencil holder I saw, so let's try this one. It's not bad, but I think I need something else. Let's uh, see if we can find some nice plant. Yeah, I think this one will do. And here's a nice little trick that caught me by surprise when I first used the app. We could delete the pencil holder and then drag in the plant, but we can also do it the faster way. By selecting the pencil holder and then clicking on the new object, Colorful does the replacement for us. And I think this plan is perfect for this spot. We don't need much more because our shot is going to be tight, so let's now focus on the lighting. Currently I'm not a big fan of this HDRI, so let's see if we can find something else. We could also light up the whole thing just with lights, and we can do that by turning the intensity of the environment to zero, but to speed things up let's use an HDRI. So let's see what we have. This one doesn't look bad, but I think we could use some more defined shadows. Yeah, I think this one looks great. We could go with this lighting alone, but I want to accentuate things a little bit more. So let's add an accent light to the camera left. We don't need it that big, so I'm gonna resize it a little bit and probably reduce the intensity as well. Yeah, I think that will do. Now that we have everything set up, I think we need a couple more small details just to make the environment feel a little bit more lived in. So let's add a few more things on the top shelf. I remember seeing some AirPods, so let's add those. And maybe another small plant of sorts. So now let's frame the whole thing and let's see what we have. Not bad at all. But of course, to make things more convincing, we need this secret ingredient. Depth of field. We want the speaker in focus, and we don't have to go crazy with the blur, so maybe something like that. And I think we're all set. Now we just have to hit export, and that's it. The render is on its way. As you can see, we can go quite fast through the whole process. It feels more like decorating and setting up your photo shoot rather than dealing with a 3D app, which is quite nice, especially for people who are afraid of 3D. In this example, the HDR is doing the heavy lifting when it comes to lighting, but we can also build our own custom light setup. Let me show you what I was experimenting with a little bit earlier. It's a product shot for headphones, and I want a more dramatic lighting. So here we have mainly one key light, and then two more lights just to highlight some more details on the headphones. The HDRI is completely disabled. The key light is the stronger one, and then these two on the right and the top are very toned down. So if I disable the key light, we're left with only small details. If you're a photographer or you have experimented with photography before, this will all look very familiar. We're basically lighting our scene in a physically accurate way. So whatever you have learned in real life applies here as well. We can change the intensity of the lights, the scale of them, and so on and so forth. The one thing we could maybe experiment with is the color of the lighting, just to make things a bit more dramatic. So let's go with something blue maybe for the key light, and something purplish, bluish for the other two lights. It doesn't look bad. I think though I like the previous lighting more. 
As you can see, it's really easy to experiment and set up things the way we want to. Here, for example, we have another typical real life setup that works in a predictable way. I have a small light underneath the pack shot lighting the back, a bounce card on the right, and then one main light on the left side of the bottle. The bounce card contributes to the reflections and the lighting of our scene, the yellow accent light is limited to the back, and everything overall works as expected, which is quite important when trying to set up realistic shots. Now about the objects. As I mentioned earlier, we can also import our own. Colorful accepts GLB files, which is the binary version of uh, GLTF, so we just have to export our object into that format, and we're good to go. I think Colorful is perfect in an advertising agency environment. Usually ad agencies have a tiny 3D department, maybe a couple 3D guys, but a ton of art directors and creative directors who usually end up waiting for the overworked 3D department. But through Colorful, this dynamic could change quite a bit. The 3D guys could hand off all the elements to the art department, and then the art director could set up the scene the way they've had in mind, which is much better than having this constant back and forth between departments. I think this simpler, non-threatening environment will help a lot of designers feel more comfortable with uh, 3D. Colorful is now in beta, so if you're interested, head on to their website and have a look. I'll have the link in the description below. The good thing is that while the application is still in beta, there won't be any big restrictions in rendering or the number of scenes saved, so I would definitely take advantage of that. And I think that's about it. I'm curious to hear your thoughts about Colorful, so let me know in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.